is cute. I swear, if that episode, if that gets into this recording, I'm going to be very, hello everyone. Welcome to a mini episode of Two Bits of Thomas. Last Wednesday, we talked about cartoons based off of video games, but there was one we left off the list that really should have been talked about simply because it just had its first season successfully aired, and I've watched the whole thing at least five times. It's that good. I'm talking Welcome about that show. I knew I shouldn't have asked asked the singing dog dog to join the show. <laughs> That's right, the Cuphead show, based off of the based off of the game Cuphead. Don't deal with the devil. This cartoon is pretty much brilliant. There's like there's like so much good about this. If you haven't watched the show. Take, take some time. Use your Netflix. Use your friend's Netflix. Pirate it. I don't know. Ooh, just watch it because this is this is one hell of a good show that kind of harkers back to the early days of cartoons like the 1930s logic and whatnot where just about anything and everything is alive. The main characters constantly get in trouble and they also have to deal with consequences that children their age should not be dealing with everything's alive and yet it doesn't scare the piss out of me because of how uncanny it is looking at you roly poly only when i was seven i love that show it scared me i don't know why i, I it doesn't scare me now but when i was seven the fact that everything had a freaking eyes and a mouth freaked me the hell out <laughs> eh, i liked it but that's beside the point the point is we're just going to talk about the first season of the Cuphead show. You might be wondering, why are we going to do that? Well, simply put, because our two friends here, Prisma and Indy, haven't completely watched the show. And I'm going to, and I would shame them for it, but they got busy lives, so I understand. Bitch, am I not your fr- Oh, oh, I get what you mean. I, I've watched it. Okay, I get I get, I get it. Yeah. Uh, I watched a few episodes of Prisma, and I'm pretty sure Indy will watch the um, series when he has, gets a chance. But to give you all a quick rundown of the on the 12 episodes that basically go on, here's here we go. Episode one, Carn Evil. Oh, M Cuphead and Mugman are supposed to be paying a paying defense. They end up having to. They end up messing that up because Cuphead uses the cannon. They go to the carnival, have fun. Cuphead loses his soul to the devil. The devil is potentially gay. I'm not sure because seriously, oh. he is such, he's like that. He's like, seriously. Um, it's kind of more like a queer code. that's like back back in the old days. Yeah, like uh, I yeah, I, I suppose. I don't because know like how. You remember, like back in the thirties, how they made the they made the villains to be queerish kind of look. Yeah, I uh, mean, I don't remember it because I was like not even alive. But yeah, I know what you mean. Let's see. Uh, hang on, I'm trying. Okay, uh, Luke Millington Drake is the voice for the devil, and my God, he just sounds like he sounds like that friend that you have in college who you wonder. Are they gay, but they're actually straight, and they just love to act like they are? Just seriously, I loved it. Uh, hello. <laughs> and he kind of reminds me of the red guy from uh, Friggin' Cow and Chicken oh, in a way. Oh, I wonder if he based him off that, maybe. He might have. Yep, anyway. This devil is blue. Oh, say that again? This devil is blue ish like navy <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that he seems more like painted black but bleh. anyway cuphead loses his soul mugman prevent saves his soul they go through the carnival the devil blows up the the um the game all the souls are returned and we basically have one of the running gags slash plots of the show cuphead owes his soul to the devil yep and Interesting enough, for these first 12 episodes, only four of them focus on trying to get uh, Cuphead's soul. 
Although I think that there's a lot of supernatural stuff that happens that maybe might be an effect of his soul being taken. I don't know, but I still I, like it. I, I, I actually just think that they used, like, the 1930s logic. Like, if you watch a lot of cartoons from the 1930s or so, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't make any sense, but sort of just does in that sort of in that time period like in the next episode we <laughs> we just have to we have possibly one of the strangest episodes <laughs> in the series baby bottle oh you mean rosemary's baba god <laughs> damn that episode that yes. episode's fucked <laughs> yes basically Ooh. cuphead and mugman spend a day watching a literal baby bottle that's essentially a baby that turns out to actually like to cause mischief and mayhem kind of like how um what's the baby's name from who framed roger rabbit oh fuck scruffy and matomo please don't hate me for this i can't remember the name of the baby yeah but basically like in that episode roger was supposed to watch like at the beginning of the movie roger's supposed to watch the baby and it ends up getting into mischief and he gets like constantly hurt that's what basically happens to uh, Cuphead at the beginning. He tries to tell Mugman, it's like, there's something up with that baby. And he doesn't believe him until Mugman tells his baby no. Hold up, I'm looking, at, I'm looking this up. <laughs> I'm, looking, I'm looking this up because I, I, know, I know I'm going to know it because, okay. Bro. Cu- <laughs> no, not baby from Ice Age, you stupid Google. <laughs> no one cares. I know that that name is Roshan. But oh, Herman, baby Herman. Oh yes, baby Herman. That's their name. But um, yeah, but yeah, the the baby constantly causes Cuphead trouble until and just dotes on Mugman until Mugman says no, and then the baby shows its darker side, and they basically go to a Tom and Jerry episode where they where they are where right. Cuphead and Mugman are Tom, and they're constantly getting the shit beat out of them. I like how Mugman at first is like, oh, he's just a cute little baby. And then it's like he breaks his shit and he's like, all right, you're fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. And I love that, like, the baby locks them outside the house, throws furniture at them, cuts the phone cord so they can't call the police, and cuts a rope with a chandelier that causes a fire. And when Elder Kettle comes back, who is getting his mustache waxed? He just looks at the wreckage and he's like, "Fire, a fish out of water, more fire." It's just like, yeah. He points out the fire. And you know what? I think I think waxing your mustache is a euphemism for something else. Let me look that up too. No, this is no. We're not doing that. I won't say what it is. I'll just look it up and I'll be like, "Oh, yep." I hate. I love you and I hate you. I love all of you and I hate all of you at the same time. Mm. Um, but what's great is that the, when they see the destruction, Cuphead and Mugman just blame it on Baby and he just sees it. It's like, oh, you can't do any wrong. Tears off mustache. Okay, so I couldn't find anything. Maybe I was thinking <laughs> of something. It just tears off the mustache and it's hilarious. And it looks like they're about to go to war against the baby. But then it's like he's sleeping his little... Um, basket, and they dump him off on someone else, similar to how someone dumped the baby off on them. Who I swear to God is just olive oil. <laughs> Who knows? And yeah. maybe, maybe we'll never see them again. Either way, hilarious episode. And episode three is... I can't remember. Ribby and Croaks. Literally... Oh. Literally the name of two of the bosses you had to fight in the original Cuphead game. They even kind of keep their appearance similar, except now they have suits and they explain why they aren't boxing, and I have to sneeze. No, it passed. They explain that they have boxing gloves because they used to be boxers, but they're not anymore, and they're being nice, respectable businessmen who take Cuphead and Mugman's five bucks and kick them into the pond. Why do Cuphead and Mugman have five bucks? Because they ate each other's ice cream and Elder Kello got tired of them arguing and told him to just go get more. 
So they sneak onto the boat, try to get the ice cream. Uh, antics ensue. The big butcher dog has a tiny dog girlfriend, and I love that um, aesthetic. You know, like the big beefy guy with the small girlfriend who can boss him around. I love that. Yeah, the big beefy dog is cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's adorable. And I also like that the, um, the, the little poodle can't say anniversary correctly. She has anniversary or something. You know, will you we? You will? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, damn it. I just know that I just know that they, she gets it wrong and it's just like, it's like goes, this is why we always fight and why I'm not telling you that your meat's escaping. Because Cuphead, mm. because Cuphead and Mugman ended up frozen. After Ribby or Croaks, I can't remember which one, used a literal Firefly waiter as a flamethrower. That's 1930s logic and I love it. Yeah. It was a... It was, it was a pretty okay episode oh, with like eventually the two admit they ate each other's ice cream Ribby and Croaks are like these two are such great brothers we're going to model ourselves after I'll admit it gave me great print, print, uh, ah, print, Princess and the Frog vibes yeah it was kind of funny that like the two stopped fighting because their mom did not like the fact that they were fighting and I'm guessing she's dead judging by what they say and they, they keep trying to act like respectable people, but they keep on fighting with each other. <laughs> Eventually, they end up sinking their whole um, their whole ship, and it's just... It, it's pretty funny that they can't stop fighting for, like, two seconds. Mm. But it was, a, it was a good episode. I, I liked it, because Cuphead and Mugman made it up. Wrong. Yeah. Yeah, they made up, they ate ice cream, and then we move on to my favorite episode! Handle with care. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, the, that one. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That was after after having a blindfolded pillow fight for some reason. Cuphead accidentally breaks off Mugman's handle, and everyone just seems to freak out because it's it's almost as if he's walking around naked for some reason. I don't know. I think like I think it's like if. Uh... If you lost your... <coughs> oh, yeah, that would be weird if you lost your... <coughs> and was walking around with it in your hand. Yeah. But... <laughs> they spend, they spend, like, a part of the episode trying to, like, glue it back together with its saliva and then honey and a bear comes and takes the, the beehive back. So then they decide to yeah. get... They decide to get glue, but it's busted. So they go to Pork Grinds to get some glue. And Mugman's like, I'm not going out there here with it, where people can see me. So he dresses up as a bride with the whole thing. And as Cuphead just throw petals in front of him as they pass by people. And they go, aww. And the wind just blows off the clothes. And I just love that. Like, I love that Like Mugman has the lipstick and shoes on. <laughs> when everyone sees oh, what happens. Friendly Wolf wants to join us. Who? Friendly Wolf. Oh. Hello. Hello. I, I allow you to join. We are talking about Cuphead. Please introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. My name is Mike of the Wolf, and uh, I just actually finished all of Cuphead today. The entire yeah, hey. season. Perfect. I mean, it's only 12 episodes. So that's pretty easy to do. And 15 minutes, too, so, you know, yeah. hey, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why right the now? hell not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we're yeah. discussing episode four right now. You missed the first three, but that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was just talking about, like, how I love how, like, when the wind blows off Mugman's dress, like, and everyone runs away, and, like, earlier in the episode, he calls, he refers to himself as Bull Boy, and then an actual <laughs> Bull Boy comes up, and when he says, I think you look swell, Mugman says, like, well, no way asked you, Bull Boy, and the way oh, he just, yeah. I just love how he struts away with his head held up and his arms down, just dun, dun, dun. Also, he like looks... A... Go ahead. I was going to say, like a drag queen, almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. Sorry, I had, yeah, yeah, I had a sneeze. 
I that's that was so it was so wonderful. Like I love the lipstick, the shoes. It's just like oh, he looks so adorable. I wish he. Would, I hope that there's some drag queen art of Mugman now because that just looks so good. I mean, the internet works really fast, so... You're not yeah. wrong. It literally takes them... Like, I don't know how long it took them to make furry porn art of the new Kirby enemy boss. I was just gonna say. I was just gonna say. Like, they actually did that, and it was just... In 10. It, just, it, it was just crazy that they just, like, immediately jumped upon that cheetah. Yep. I mean, it, it was way too easy, but... Um... Oh, Kirby right. also feels like a 1930s cartoon, to be fair. So, yeah, but with the rubber hose animation and stuff. Yeah, yeah. but in Technicolor, <laughs> and the fact that everything's alive. Yeah. Yup. The hills have eyes. Be afraid. No, that's Mario. Oh right. <laughs> but yep. Continuing with, uh, we have Handle of Care. They they failed to get some glue from. Uh, they fail to get some glue from pork rinds, so they go back home. Elder Kettle tells a lie about uh, the Handle Fairy and how that they replace handles with man handles. And just lost it when he, they said man. And I'm like, Me oh too. my god, man, <laughs> really, just, <he's>... really? <laughs> yes, it was it was brilliant. He just goes man handles. Protein. Oh wait, wrong shot. <laughs> Protein. Oh my god. Um, Although I lost interest in Agretzko after season three, I did too. not like how it was written. It was just they did it. Be, they kind of forced it because of the fans. They wanted it to happen. Well, in... talk about the time. Yeah, well, that'll be a its own show because that's yeah. its own thing. Yeah. Agretzko is definitely good, but. Um, <clears throat> Moving on. Um, Anyways, Mario Party 5 is a 2003 game developed by Hudson <laughs> Anyway, at the end of <laughs> All Dogs Go... that? <laughs> anyway, at the end of... In, anyway, at the end of All Dogs Go to Heaven 2, Gordon Freeman dies. Oh, dear God! Oh. <laughs> no! no! <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> anyway, at the episode ends, the Kendall Care ends with with Mugman and Cuphead having their handles glued back on by Elder Kettle who did it in the middle of the night and apparently he has a handle fairy outfit which I guess he was going to be prepared if they saw him which is hilarious they didn't take their heads off uh, do that ding ding and their heads shatter and it's just <laughs> it's brilliant <clears throat> uh, roll the dice Oh, yes, this one's great. Don't, the introduction don't, of King don't. Dice. Okay, another really flamboyant character that just makes you wonder, is he gay or is he just flamboyant? Which Well, one thing we do know, he's Wayne Brady! <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I, also, real quick, I was going to go back because we were talking about, like, the devil possibly being gay. I would personally, I would, my theory is that I don't think he really cares because I think he's too much of a narcissist to really like anyone. True. But at the same time, I love it. He's, he's just, God, his introduction just going, hello. It's just, oh, yes. Yeah. And <laughs> anyway, go ahead and mug man in or at least Cuphead ends up on the sh on the uh, radio show game Roll the Dice that works like this. And uh, name this song, answer one question, and roll the dice. You win, but it's a trap to steal your soul. And when King Dice realizes he has a chance to get Mud Cuphead for the devil, he thinks this is an easy opportunity. But well, Cuphead is an idiot. <laughs> There's no way you can be a sinner. Roll the dice. Everyone's a winner. Oh god damn it! Now I'm thinking of Gordon Freeman again. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say because like I love that he doesn't instead of he doesn't know what Twinkle Twinkle Little Star is and he goes Sprinkle Sprinkle Little Car. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like seriously, <laughs> Cuphead. Really, and, you can't yeah. be this dumb. You cannot be this dumb. <laughs> no, not, I'm not even this dumb. And I'm a coyote. A real dumb coyote. <laughs> and, what's, and what's like, and he gives him an easy answer 
to just so that way he can say the name of the location. And when he spins the dice, they literally just go off of the handles or whatever and break. He literally lost. I love that he was going to ask Mugman for help, but he froze up in terror because he was like, he has stage fright. Yep. It's just... God, it's such a hilarious episode, especially with the phone call between King Dice and the Devil, where he's, he's just like, your number one's calling. <laughs> Who? Huh. Your number one? King Dice? <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Uh, Why are pretty? <laughs> and number one, I hate disappointments. Oh, that's very good. Yeah, that was good. Yes, it was. Oh, but I love this scene after when he fails and like henchmen's just like, "Can I get your autograph?" And he's like, "Now is not the good time." And he just. Oh, can, was we talk about, can we talk about the little telephone guy? Because I feel so bad for him. Yes. He loses his soul twice. Right? I feel like he did it more than twice. Uh, no, maybe. No, I think just, I think, well, I don't know. I know at least twice he lost his soul. I just feel bad for him. I, but also the scene where, like, when, like, when he's talking to the devil, when King, when Dice is talking to the devil and the chair turns around, he's not there and he's behind him. And he just goes, ah! <laughs> it's just... It's just like a funny little scream. And the animation where you see it circling around with King Dice being held up. That is such a fluid animation right there. Yeah. It, it kind of reminds me of like the classic 1930s cartoons, especially Popeye the Sailor Man, in which they had like live action set pieces that they would open up for the beginning of the cartoon before they zoom in into like the story with the animated segments. Yeah. Well, the whole they well, really do a lot of authenticity. Of, the whole oh. house sequence reminds me of the Bimbo cartoons, especially uh, Swing You Sinners. Oh, yes. yes, yes. Yeah. Also, um, the the, uh, the Winnie the Pooh uh, movies do that too, so it's really cool. Oh, you mean Half a Lumps and Woozles? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that looks so good. That's, that's I seen... pissed out of me when I was a kid. I don't know why. Again, a lot of... <laughs> The last Winnie the Pooh movie I saw, which I know this is going to be a separate topic, uh, was the the 2011 movie, which that film was actually really good. But sad that that was Disney's last, like, 2D animated film before yeah. they went to 3D. Okay, I've just met you and I like you already. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And this now is we... Silver, right? Yeah, Silver Yote. And well, now it's we... a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. And now we move on to another one of my favorites, just because it has an amazing song. And interestingly enough, the next episode has the same director in story. Wait, is this the ghost one? Yes, Ghost yeah, Ain't the Real. Best episode. The, best episode. Yeah, the episode, the episode starts off with, with Mugman admitting that he most likely is going to need some padded protection when seeing a horror movie. I'm oh. not. I'm not. I'm not kidding. They literally make a joke how Mugman had to change his pants three times. Oh God. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. They didn't decide. They didn't realize it's getting late, so they cut through the graveyard. They end up passing by some ghosts. And just <laughs> bless him. What comes out? Spoiled milk. I mean, like, how does that even work? I don't even want to think about that. Never mind. <laughs> Wait, what? Don't don't ask. Don't no, question right. it. No, no, I'm not they, gonna question they, it. They, they go. They decide to cut through the graveyard. Some ghosts haunt them. They they almost end up dying, and then they end up home where Elder Kello thinks they're zombies and tries to attack them. Yeah, yep. that was. But, uh... the, <laughs> but like, I, God, this is such another good episode because the ghosts it's... are. It's my favorite. Yeah, out of the, all. Like the ghosts are like really, like they're so hilarious in their pranks and what they do and just how much fun they have. Like, it's like the ghosts from that Mickey Mouse cartoon. They, they are just having so much fun being ghosts. And the song, oh, yes. it's so good. Creepy ghosts don't just socialize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's such a good. I love it. 
and like and it's like I also like how um <laughs> how <laughs> when they like they tie Mugman's shoes together he goes I don't know who this cuphead is is and it just like makes him trip and then they, when he realizes he's seeing an actual ghost his nose falls off and then he just runs away <laughs> yeah, and they go I laughed so hard when that happened. Yes, and it goes into a coliseum, and they think that Mugman's teeth are chattering, but it's a bunch of skeletons. Yeah, the spooky, the spooky, scary skeletons. Yes, and where it's, they came from? Yes, it was so. It was even funnier stuff. Like when they all, when they all thought that they died, they were like, "Oh no, what do we do?" It was like, "Oh man, we didn't want to scare them this bad." Like, they just wanted to have fun. He didn't want to kill them. Which was just... God. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, it was but, a good episode. Yes, but again, like, the song is really what nails it. Uh, yes, indeed. But you know what else? But you know what else is a good song that really gets nailed? Wah. Shut up. <laughs> Root Pack. Oh, Which, yes. Literally... Oh, right. The very first episode I saw. You, that was the because... first episode you watch? Yeah, because you were streaming it, and I just jumped in. I was like, oh, I haven't seen this yet. Oh, oh this is cool. Yeah. Interesting enough, Root Pack is literally the name of the very first bosses you fight in the game. The Root yep. Pack. A potato, onion, and carrot. And the only boss I beat. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I'm terrible at video games. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, to be to be one hundred percent fair, um, Cuphead is not a game for those who are not willing to risk a few controllers being broken. Yeah, mm -hmm. I suck. <laughs> yeah, uh, but what's I'm, really... good at I'm good at Pokemon. <laughs> fair enough. Now what's really cool is that the episode opens with the with uh the botanic panic or uh, yeah, the botanic panic song actually playing. Mm -hmm. It's really cool that they like, you know, they bring the root pack in and give them their song as the opening and it plays during the episode. Yep. Uh what's what happens is Eller Kello has a garden, he ends up injuring his back. So Cuphead and Mugman watch it, the root pack break in, they decide to let them stay there because they tell a sob story about being orphans, and the whole, and they basically give us a, hey, the episode's going to end with the onion crying, because he just, because he's like, because he, he's such a crybaby. <laughs> yep. The, the Technically, you, you want to make him cry, because if he doesn't, he sense that he's seeking radish out for you but in the he, game. Yeah, that, that, to be fair, that one's not that bad to deal if you know what you're doing, but yeah. Um, eventually, they invite a bunch of other vegetables, they throw a huge party, they try to get rid of them by dressing up as a scarecrow, calling the police, and when the police come, <laughs> this eggplant just goes, sorry, you're not on the list. And they just go, sorry boys, we tried. And when they go back, like when they came forward, they leave a dust trail, and when they go back, it's like the the dust trail just everything just plays in reverse. Yeah, <laughs> it was like, damn it, that's hilarious. It's like, it's like they literally just went backwards. <laughs> All right, we got backwards five more episodes to go. What, they eventually make the youngin cry by telling them the sad sobbing story. Everyone cries. They get. They decide to absorb the onions, making them bit the water from the tears that was absorbed in the ground to make them nice and big and round, inflate me big and round. That's the oh my god! Yeah, I wanted to do that. And Redact. Elder, <laughs> and Elder Kettle basically was like, "I'm going to make stew out of you now," and they run away. And then we move on to a sort of two-part episode: Swear Off Dead and Swear Luck Next Time. Yeah. Basically, the devil's having a trying to celebrate all the souls he's been collecting, in only for Stickler to basically be like, "Excuse me, I need you did not collect one soul. You are not doing your job. You need to do your job." Guys, yeah, souls, but a witch ain't one. Oh wait, no, that's soul eater. Never mind. <laughs> 
Yep, yeah, so. when that character showed up, I was just like, okay, robot chicken nerd. <laughs> Pretty much. It, right? <laughs> Wait, so, what? Oh, yeah, 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 the nerd from Robot Chicken, yep. Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, robot chicken! <laughs> <laughs> so the devil tries to go collecting Cuphead's soul. However, they went to... However, Mugman, Cuphead and Mugman will go to Quadrag... Quad... Quadrag... Quad... quad some elderly guy who lives in water but water is like hey can you give us an advice and he's like sure make it knit this invisible sweater or they do so the devil can't touch touch cuphead and and they basically get through the forest with the devil trying to make cuphead take off his sweater with a carnival uh, a free hot dog and pretending to be the guy who gave him the sweater he eventually gets super hot and Mugman gives his brother one last hug to ensure that he don't he doesn't take off the sweater. The devil gets really mad, goes back down to hell, lies, and basically burns the uh, the book so that way Robot Chicken Nerd has to recount all the souls so he devil has time to figure out how to collect Cuphead's soul. Yeah. It's I love how they keep trying. He keeps trying to make Mugman t Cuphead take off his sweater, with my favorite line being, "Take it off, and I'll give you ten bucks." Oh yeah, uh, that is like twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "No, Cuphead, your soul is worth more than ten bucks." Yeah, you're right. Make twenty bucks. <laughs> I just love that he's like, to make it 20 bucks. Like, dude, your soul is worth more than 20 bucks. That is so a nod to the grifting of the 30s. It's not even funny. I was going to say that's so, that's so you. You'd be like, Silver, you must give me your soul. In exchange, I'll give you 10 bones. Uh, make it 11 and a slice of bacon. There'd be dude. a half eaten can of Pringles in my soul slot. <laughs> Oh my god. And Swear Luck next time basically picks up from this episode where the devil is, is trying to do, figure out ways to, uh, again, collect Cuphead's soul and make him get rid of the sweater so he can do so. While well, Cuphead is basically getting hot from wearing a sweater all the time. They eventually go to a carnival where the devil waits in line with Cuphead and because... Because okay, so here's the thing. After trying several times to get the soul, the swearer off, he then goes to their house. They didn't tell him to go around back because Elder Kettle can't know that Cuphead lost his soul to the devil, and they push him into the bush, and he comes out. What's that noise? Um, it's just a big, angry cat. And he's like, Well, tell him be quiet. I'm trying to take a nap, and paint that fence. Yeah, that's a recurring thing. They want them to paint the fence. Yeah, it happens at least twice, as far as I, I mean, know. I mean, who is Mr. Miyagi? <laughs> <laughs> yep, they didn't tell the devil, hey, you paint the fence, I'll take off a sweater. They go to the carnival while he paints this, paints the fence in this huge musical montage. Which, by the way, it looks hella fun. I, I love amusement parks, and that carnival looks hella fun as all. Well. Yeah. Um, Cuphead took off the sweater, but the devil doesn't know it because it's invisible. That's the joke. So they wait in line. They get up to the to the to the brain ride. scrambler. It's called the brain scrambler. The obliterator. Think, yeah, the obliterator. They get oh, up to, that's fun. <laughs> yeah, they get up to the obliterator. The devil inappropriately touches Cuphead several times. Someone calls CPS. Oh God. <laughs> uh, wait, wait, wait. Cup protective services. Yes. That's a good joke. Damn, damn it. Damn it, Silver. <laughs> <laughs> Mugman puts the swear on the devil. He gets shot. An elephant from the first episode just slowly <laughs> eats popcorn while watching the devil get zapped. <laughs> right. And the, and that's basically the episode. <laughs> it's, just, it's just so funny that, like, it's a hilarious two part, sort of like two part episode where the devil just tries to collect Cuphead's soul, fails because of the sweater, and ends up getting zapped multiple times, and it gets tricked into painting the fence like it's a um, um, Tom Sawyer book. Yeah. 
That, that was hilarious. It was just you mean, so... Mark, you mean Mark Twain. Well, yeah, Mark Tom Twain. Twain. Yeah. Well, yeah. I knew what I was talking about. Tom Sawyer is another good movie, and that's a furry movie, actually. Oh, <laughs> the oh, furry. No. No. Oh. No. No. Yeah. No, we ain't, we're only going down that rabbit hole. We will one day. Oh, it's God. Worth talking about. You, you do realize they made a pun, right? I heard the pun. And yes, you also worked on Tom Sawyer, was the same guy who did All Dogs Go to Heaven 2, where apparently Gordon Freeman dies in the, in the movie. <laughs> and not with the freaking copy pasta. No, this is hilarious. <laughs> just just like Dangerous Mugman. This is another fun episode. We're, oh, we, this one's good. Yeah, basically, um, uh, Copy and Mugman go to pork grinds to play an annoying pork rinds, he gets annoyed with them, he sends them on a task, Mugman's thinking, this is too dangerous, so Cuphead's like, here, take these goggles, they'll make you brave, okay, they get to the island that they think they're supposed to go to, the Mugman loses the goggles, doesn't realize this, and he basically acts all brave, because that's just how it goes in every single, hey, have this, and you'll be brave, okay, loses it, still acts brave without them. <laughs> the confidence was inside him all along. Exactly. That's the plot. That's 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 the joke. Confidence. Oh my god. They they get the egg. Give it. They get an egg. Give it to Pork Grind, who t- basically tells them like, "You were supposed to go get my laundry." Oh. And when they're about to play this annoying pinball game again, he's just like, "No." Tears it off the wall and just gives it to him. It's like, get out! And then the egg hatches, and it's and it's a little grim matchstick child. And then the real grim matchstick comes, takes the child, and burns Pork Grind's entire store down. Yeah. First off, the little the little dragon is adorable, and seeing Grim yes. Matchstick appear, that's hilarious. Yeah. Also, fuck Grim Matchstick. He's a fucking prick. Yeah, I've In seen playthroughs of it. It looks like I wouldn't even want to know where to begin with that one. <laughs> it's it's not worth it. He's an asshole. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Let's. This was like besides being just the whole confidence inside episode. It was, it was a pretty fun to see Mugman, who was who was portrayed as the coward, just have all this bravery and. Cuphead constantly getting injured and in a deleted scene or a, what would have been a scene <laughs> they face off against a snake Mugman uses a stick to stop it from devouring him but the snake ends up then devouring Cuphead yep <laughs> it, it's hilarious it's like literally like hold it yes whole war whatever it's uh-huh. it's I, it's just a great deleted scene. It's also kind of funny that like I because, mean, at this point we already said porn. Who cares? Wait, we did. When? Yeah. You oh, did. Right. Talk about Kirby. Kirby, yeah, Kirby, right. Kirby. Oh wait, that's a different show. Kirby, Kirby, Kirby. Can gonna I get help you in DDD? <laughs> you can help me get that there, Kirby. <laughs> that's that's a, another. One. Yeah. I'd rather watch the Japanese version instead. I will. I will fight you. Same with Sonic X. It has I, I, a lot of uncensored jokes in there. Yes, it does. But, yes. But here's the thing: in the English version, Meta Knight talks like a Transylvanian Mexican. No, more like Antonio Banderas from Zorro. Fair yeah, enough. I, I even got to meet the voice actor who played Meta Knight in the. English dub. He he even told me he based it off of Antonio Banderas. Oh my god! Yeah. And now I want to meet him and say like, dude, you are my I, you are my hero right now. You know what we should play Mario Party Five. It's a 2003 game by Hudson Soft. <laughs> it was also released on. It was also it's also one of Steam's most famous games. Games. All dogs go to heaven too. I mean. Uh... Okay. Okay, <laughs> Dirt Nap. This is just hilarity incarnation. I don't know. 
This was like, I mean, I love all the episodes, but out of all of them, this one was actually my least favorite. Really? I, I kind of like it because like it basically Ellery kept it's it's the classic. Oh, there was a misunderstanding, episode. which is kind of boring, kind of. And all yeah, of I agree with Friendly on this one. Well, here's the thing: I just like the fact that not every time Elder try, Elder Keller tries to like, you know, make himself seem useful and not old and not about to be killed or whatever, he keeps hurting himself. I just find that funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well. I mean, sometimes it's done right, like with uh, the one where they thought, where and SpongeBob, where they thought Mr. Krabs was a robot. Sometimes it's done right. Oh yeah. But, mm-hmm. I, yeah, I, I think it's a bit of a hard thing to nail, but that's definitely a fun episode, especially when like he comes out, his eyes are red because of salt. He's got an egg boil, uh, egg hard boil egg holder thing, tongs. He's got tongs. Yeah. He's got dead batteries anyway. in his back pocket. Anyways, and, it's time for Great Ally to start tap dancing. No, really. No, wait, hang on. I just oh. can I, can I just say that that the whole misunderstanding is literally about a worm. And then in the end, <laughs> other kettle sets up all these booby traps. He ends up <laughs> saying them all off and then falls into a, into one of these deadly spike traps. And it's sort of like, what should we do with him? And what's burning in the backyard? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's so I fucking was like, dark. Oh my god, really? <laughs> it's, it's like, but it's like, that's the kind of humor they're trying to go for. This is like 1930s humor where it's really dark. I, and they don't... I just don't like the whole it was all a misunderstanding trope. Sometimes it just doesn't really work with me. Yeah, but this episode basically shows yeah, we are pulling punches. We're literally just implied that he's dead and was impaled by spears. Oh, like, yeah, that's... I mean, they did a really good job with emulating the 1930s feel, especially where they made references to, like, World War One and World War Two. They made references to, like, um, like the tap dancing, like, you know, showmanship. Surely. Yeah. And speaking of which, In Charm's Way... The final episode of season one, and what an episode to end off of. Right? After, Jesus, tap and great a Lyle. Yeah, after a cup and mugman accidentally break Elder Kello's glasses, they, they get they try to get it fixed, where they run into uh, Miss Chalice. A well, a chalice a chalice character sort of like them, who's able to charm her way through just about anything. Like she literally gets free gum, gets into the movies for free, gets free hot dogs. She charms her way into everything just because she knows how to dance and smile. Yep. And she decides, tries to teach it to Cuphead and Mugman, and they're kind of okay, but they really do need Miss Chalice to kind of help with it. I think it's ironic that one of the characters Great Elisle plays does not smile, and this one totally smiles all the time, almost. Hmm. Yeah. Are we talking about Vicky or who? Billy and Mandy. Well, Mandy. Oh, mm. right. Right, 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 right. She right, literally right. does not smile, but anyways. She doesn't. No. I mean, I mean, that's kind of the whole point. The episode then ends with the Cuphead and Mugman trying to break into a cookie factory. They succeed, but then they get captured and thrown in jail. And we won't find out what happens to them until possibly 2023. Yay! Yeah, mm-hmm. but what's even what's even weirder and is also kind of interesting is that Miss Chalice goes from a physical form into a ghost form. Yeah, that one yeah. I was like really curious about. Is that like based That's off of games or Well see, here's the thing. In the game, Miss Chalice was originally a ghost, but via a DLC, she gains a physical form. But because this isn't following the game I'm kind of curious if she maybe made a deal with someone to be able to have a physical form but can turn into a ghost. It's it's tough to say. Here's my theory. Here's my theory. She can only live under the devil because she can only do bad deeds. She was originally a good person, but she got her soul, soul taken. But to live again, she has to just be a nasty person. I mean, that, that, that makes sense. It that does because like literally everything she does is for a reason. Like she 
She pretends to be homeless to get a coin to get it out of a gumball machine, but then she tickles it to, to like, you know, get more. She then tap dances for her and pretends to I can't to wait be... to actually see the result. And then it's like, well, a dumb coyote predicted this the year before, so, right when season one came out, so. Yep. And yeah. like, she, she uh, acts hungry to get hot dogs and then gives them to people to get into a movie for free. Like, she does all this, and she does just bail on them. So it's like, what? Why is it? It's going to drive me crazy. But anyway, that was Cup. That was the first season of Cuphead. I can't wait to see season two. And can I just say that, that, um, real quick, I just want to say I love all the references. In fact, tomorrow I'm going to. To point out every single reference the show has from episode, from the very opening to the final episode, just because it's so good. And I well, have fun. I won't be here. Don't worry. I'll don't worry. I'll I'll bite I'll bite this wolf over here. Okay. Sounds good. I'll be I'll, I'll be with Scruffy and Matomo this weekend. So. Also, you better not try to fight a fox and a bird wolf. He's a bat wolf. Wolf bat. Back. But anyway, the opening song, I love it. I it's I love the opening w- lyrics. Come with me to Inkwell Isle. It's just up the coast, maybe 29 miles. There's a good and the bad and somewhere in between. A cup and a mug, man, you'll see what I mean. You know what's, <laughs> you know what's honestly a little ironic about that? It reminds me of a show that tried to also do a 1920s, 30s aesthetic and was also creepy. Do you know what show I'm talking about? Uh, no. Flapjack. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah, if you never watch, a lot of people, a lot of people like love shows like Ren and Stimpy and Invader Zim. I did not, but I loved Flapjack. I, I loved Invader Zim. I like love that. Invader Zim. Like, I realized, like, holy fuck, this was a kid's show and they got away with this? What? Yeah. yeah. Flapjack kind of does, like, a similar thing, especially, like, just, like, some of the, oh, creepy stuff. Like, a lot of people, like, say it's gross and whatnot, but I think it's really Here's good. An idea. Here's an idea. Why don't we end this episode here and we'll talk about creepy kid shows, like, why are they for kids next week? We we, yes. we we should, but um, before we do that, um, any final thoughts on the Cuphead show? Like, Honestly, it's really fucking good. I give the show definitely a nine point five out of ten. I would too. Yeah, I it watched some like of the, I gotta watch it. I watched some of the episodes. I really need to watch more. Yeah, uh, and also that show has meme materials. Oh, good lord! Yes, you already heard me talk about how Mugman most likely wears something when he goes to see horror movies. Yeah, trust me, Andy. We only scratched the surface. You really got to watch this. Yes, it's uh, it's a hilarious, it's a good show. It pays homage to the game really well about, you know, being the game, being show. And if you have if you have a Netflix or someone with a Netflix, go ahead and watch it. It's brilliant. You'll have a good time. I've seen it multiple times. It's just good. I, the first season definitely hits it out strong. I can't. There's going to be like three more seasons, so I, I'm curious what we'll see in the other three. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. Should have been mini episode, but uh, like an hour. The time makes fools of us all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, mm-hmm. this has been t- Tom Two Bit t- uh, Thomas Two Bit Beauty. Stu- Beauty. He's cute. I mean, she's cute. Damn it. Keep fucking that up. This is. She's adorable. Don't you get on this now. <sighs> Why not? Because I literally. I'm literally constantly telling everyone no. You are I'm... going to accept being called cute, and you are going to like it. Guess what? It's opposite day. What do you think is uh-huh. what do you think this is? Sunday from SpongeBob SquarePants? No, I think it's opposite day from Billy and Mandy. But anyways, this point still stands. It's opposite day. <laughs> no, I mean yes, I mean shut up. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Anyway, this is Thomas. <laughs> this this is Thomas Two Bit Bestow with with Silver the Yoat. Happy Tales. Prism of the Toaster. You're still cute. Indie Timber. Take care. Micah the Wolf. Yo. And this has been R2 Bits. Mario Party 5!